In South Africa is constantly under scrutiny. A report commissioned by the Department of Education stated that the country's PhD output is considerably low. The report states that in 2010, the number of PhD students produced by South Africa's ac academic institutions combined was equal to the number of the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Now, the National Planning Commission, in its vision for 2030, set out goals for improving education, training and innovation in order to promote economic development. Professor Chilidzi Marwala is a research vice chancellor at the University of Johannesburg. He's in studio to tell us a little bit more about this. Uh, thank you for being with us. It's good to have you on the program. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. All right, so um, this has been a subject for some time now. It, it is a very important issue. I mean, when we look at the numbers that we're dealing with right now, what, in your opinion, do you think is at the root of it? Well, I, I think uh, the universities need to be better capacitated. To give you an example, in order to, uh, to train somebody uh, uh, to become a, a PhD graduate, uh, the person who is training him must have a, a PhD. And currently, as things stand, only 30% of our academics actually have PhDs. And uh, the... the, the, the the, the plan is to raise that number to 70% by 2030. Uh, if we were to do a comparison, if you were to take a university in the United States, uh, that, uh, that, that number will be 100%. Everybody will have a PhD. So we need to make sure that we have adequate number of people who can be able to train these students. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, we also need to increase our throughput uh, because the more the graduates we have, uh, from the undergraduate uh, level, the more we can be able to draw from, from them for people to study for their masters uh, and their doctorates. And also the other thing is facilities, uh, so, so some aspects of PhDs require labs and some of uh, the equipment that we, we need to be able to train students are not readily available in the country. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that, that figure that we put on the screen there is quite, uh, it's a bit of an eye opener. That South Africa only um, trains 28 or produces 28 PhD graduates per million in the population compared to 48 in Brazil, 187 in Korea, and 264 in Australia. There's a big problem. The, absolutely. That is uh, definitely a big problem. It just uh, tells you that uh, there's much that needs to be done. You know? uh, uh, I think uh, the plan, the national development plan to increase it to 6,000 is... It's, it's reachable if mm. we make the necessary investments to be able to, to train these students. But it will not be enough uh, because uh, uh, these things of training uh, PhD students actually have impact on our economy. You know? Economies that produce uh, more PhDs tend to be more dynamic than economies that do not uh, produce PhDs. So this is not just uh, producing PhD graduates for the sake of, of, of production. Yeah. We do it because it has an economic impact. Is there evidence that basically supports the relationship between education and economic development of countries? No, absolutely. I mean, if you, let's just take one country, Japan, you know, the third biggest economy on the planet. Um, you know, the higher education participation rate is over 90%. You take South Korea, the, 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 the the levels are in the 90s. You take Germany and so on and so forth. So there's no doubt that the more people participate in higher education, the more people go for postgraduate training, the more people do PhDs, uh, the better the economy is going to perform in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been made clear over and over again that the, the education system here in South Africa needs an overhaul. It needs to improve dramatically. Why is it so difficult? Why can we not get this right? Well, uh, education is very, very expensive. Uh, 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 if you look at our national budget, 20% of it actually goes to education. Um, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, we have chosen a route of uh, uh, massifying education. Uh, uh, we don't have a differentiated education system where uh, smart people go to certain schools, which you would see if you go to Asia and uh, you go to certain parts of Europe. So this democratization of, uh, of education obviously uh, uh, will result in certain things going slowly because we have to distribute it across uh, the entire population instead of concentrating. 
Uh, and I believe that democratizing education is good in the long run. Yeah. We do have some success stories. Uh, our literacy rates are actually quite high. Uh, it's, 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 it's only when you go up, when you look at how many people pass metric and so on and so forth, that the numbers start uh, becoming disappointing. Yeah. The criteria in order to get into uh, study a PhD, um, for certain groups of the population, it's lower than it is for others. Um, and, I, and I am talking colour at the moment mm. because, I mean, you'll hear a lot of students saying that they've done exceptionally well, uh, whether mm. it be a white or an Indian student saying they did exceptionally well at school and yet they cannot be admitted in. But uh, if you are not, you do get admitted in. And this is, I think, one of the sticking points as well. And I'm seeing a lot of people bringing this up on Twitter. Could this be an issue? Because you find that a lot of people have to go outside of the country to study because their own universities here in South Africa won't accept them due to, no. obviously we understand the reasoning behind it, but can this have an effect on the graduates? No, I don't think so. If, uh, if, if you do come across such uh, students, please uh, refer them to me because uh, we, are, we have not even uh, uh, met our goals. Uh, we, we would like to ad admit much more PhD students than, than we have admitted. So. Uh, I think uh, it is a little bit more complicated than that. You know, you have uh, students who choose to go and work instead of pursuing postgraduate studies. We don't have enough conversion rates between undergraduate studies and postgraduate studies. I think um, we can take a little bit more. Um, of course, uh, you know, we might have to negotiate what areas uh, we are working on because uh, certain areas we might not have the equipment. But uh, but definitely, I think uh, uh, we can take more. Good. It's good to hear. I'd love to hear more from, uh, from the, uh, the viewers out there and we'll read a couple of your tweets as well. How you feel about the PhD levels here in South Africa. And when you look at those figures that we showed you earlier, only 28 per million population actually uh, graduate. Um, and this is compared to 48 in Brazil, 187 in Korea and 264 in Australia. So, yeah, that's the, that's the reality. Thank you for joining us, Professor. Uh, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Uh, it's Lede Marwala, who is a research vice chancellor at the University of Johannesburg. All right, let's. Uh